think I know where Six Eleven was. Ah, uh, back over there. Hey now, did you drone it? No, I heard his whistle. That wasn't the bus. No. No, I heard steam. No, I seen steam. Side, take the end of the seatbelt, bring it firmly across your waist, and snap it into place. Two, three, <laughs> four. That's right, folks, there are no seatbelts. It gets the idea across, doesn't it? We need you to stay in your seats. Yeah, I know, there are 20,000 comedians out of work, and you're stuck with me. Well, as you can tell, our first item of business is to back up to the north end of the site. Very shortly, we'll come to a complete stop and then reverse direction. So remember, it's important that everyone please remain seated. Meanwhile, if you look out the east side windows right now, you can see some of the famous trees and weeds of Spencer Shops. Actually, folks, on the other side of all that foliage is the Norfolk Southern Main Line. The line is double track through the area, so numerous freight trains and at least six passenger trains use the tracks every day. You'll have a much better view of it once we reach the North End. Now, for those of you who are real fans or geography fans, or like the East Walk Geography, when we come to a stop, you're going to be precisely halfway between Washington, D.C. on the north and Atlanta, Georgia on the south. For those of you sitting on the east side of our train, just before we stop, if you look out the east side windows down at the ground close to the train, you might be able to see a silver-colored metal disc embedded in concrete. That is the center point between the two cities. And if we have any visitors with us from up north today, if you look out the west side windows, you can see all those trees out there that are covered with vines. Those vines are called kudzu. Please feel free to take home all you want. <laughs> well, now it's invasive, it's us. Virginia's the extent of it. Maybe up to West Virginia. It's an annual, so it's going to have a long enough growing season to like get started, turn green, and grow. So the colder climates, it, it can't get very far. <laughs> so nice to have y'all, really is. Thank you. How are y'all doing? Y'all been here before? Yeah. Where you from? You gotta bring them back for four weeks. You know what? Right where we just left. And yeah, 
Now that we're going through the crossing area coming up on the east side of our train, is the area that we have been going to be 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 going it was used to pull the equipment through the area. The tall silver tower held the sand that was used to scour the rolling stock for a new coat of paint. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, uh, he's never got to ride trains. This is his first train ride, but I wanted to make it so he could see 611 why he's down here. We didn't make you mad if I told you I'd have to run it last year. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Actually, that's really cool. In a few moments, we're going to ride by two I big silver tanks with the, the letters S R P on them. Again, they'll be on the east side of our train. Built in the 1920s, those two tanks held water for fighting fires here on the site. To fill those tanks up, water had to be pumped all the way from the Agni River, and that's four miles north of us. When we go by those two tanks, I hope you notice the little red brick building that's right beside them. Don't let it size fool you, that was a very important building here on the site. It was called the Transformer House. <laughs> well, the Built oh, in 1914, that little building housed the controls for all of the electrical power distribution here at the shop. I think you'll agree with me that's a very essential thing to have here at the property. Well, in 1990, we found another important job for that little red brick building. Today, this is the restrooms. No, oh, uh, the mighty have fallen. Well, that's about as close to potty as we can get on this train ride. <laughs> Back in 1911, the Master Mechanics Building housed the office of the Master Mechanic, payroll clerk, office clerks, and the officials for the Danville Division of the Southern Railway. That building is just now coming up on the east side of our train. Today, it houses our administrative offices and the gift shop called the gift station. As we proceed along the platform, the second building in line, the big gray metal building, is believed to be the oldest building on site. It's called Warehouse Number 3, and it was built back in 1896. That building served as the original Master Mechanics office until the move in 1911. From that day to this, it's been fully operational as a storage facility. And the last building in line, the one with all the windows in it, is called the Flu Shop. Built in 1924, that building was originally used to store and repair the flues of a steam locomotive. The flu is a tube that allows heat and smoke from the fire to pass through the boiler, thereby heating the water to make the steam. There could be anywhere from 200 to 350 flues inside a steam locomotive's boiler. After we get past the flue shop, the next building in line on the east side of our train is the roundhouse. But I'm going to discuss that building on our return trip. Instead, I'd like you to look for a somewhat smaller red brick building coming up on the east side and much closer to us. It's called the Oil House. Built in 1913, that building is so big on the inside, its basement alone housed by Patrick? tanks, each capable of storing up to 52,000 gallons of oil. Every locomotive crew had to stop by here and pick up a supply of oil before going on a mainline run. Coming up shortly on the east side of our train is a rather odd looking concrete building, one with a tower on it. Unfortunately, your view is going to be partially obstructed by a car, rail cars, but at the end of the rail cars will have a better view of it. That building is called the Sand House. It too was built in 1913. The building was used for drying, screening, and storing the sand that's used on the locomotives. Today, sand is still used for traction in wet or icy weather. When traveling up a steep grade, or even when pulling a heavy load, you can leave the sand still. Also, if you keep looking on these sides, you might be able to see a rather large and ugly looking piece of industrial equipment. You can't miss it. It's painted green and rust. It's a lathe. That lathe was used to turn them through the drive wheels of steam locomotives. Now, in a moment, we're going to go through a fence line. When we do that, we're actually leaving the museum property. We're going to go out into the south yards. We're able to do that courtesy of the Norfolk Southern Railway. And believe me, without their cooperation and assistance, this ride would be a whole lot shorter. 
Well, now that we're leaving museum property, the area that's opening up here on the east side of our train is where the stockyards used to be located. Animals destined for market would be taken off the trains to be fed and watered here. You see, there's a federal law going back to the 1890s that says you cannot carry animals by train for more than 24 hours at a time without stopping and taking the animals off for a minimum five-hour rest break. Of course, that's for humane purposes. Today, generally speaking, livestock is no longer carried by train. Instead, trucks now carry the animals to market so the pens were torn down. But as long as I'm on the topic of trains and animals, there was another very interesting law in that same subject. It was called a blue law. This particular blue law was written in the year 1900, and it specifically stated that the railroads could not operate freight trains on Sundays. But the less animals needed to be moved. And again, that was for humane purposes. Now, I don't mean to say those old-time Southern Railway workers were not above bending the rules now and then, but they did keep an old mule back up around that way. Yeah, if they had a train coming in Saturday night, they needed to be worked on now first thing Monday morning. Well, they just put that old mule on board the train so they could work with a clear conscience. Yes, sir, they were all in livestock that day. Well, if you're interested, the mule's name was more. The tracks here in the South Yard are all the way of the receiving and classification tracks that once made up the huge yard here at Spencer. Today, this area is a staging area for the Salisbury Switcher. That's a local train that takes cars to private rail sidings at different companies, such as Food Line and Lowe's Home Improvement. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're now approaching the southern terminus of our ride. In just a few moments, we'll be coming to a complete stop and then reversing directions. So remember, it's important for everyone. Please remain seated. Now, they've bought some tracks. I want to do a search. Oh, sadly. Why can't we do a search? Colonel Springs had 21 tracks on Because it's expensive. Because it'll, it'll, it'll be too expensive. It'll, uh, it's so co too costly to build one. Well, this shows a certain Right? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when I come to a stop, please remain nope. in your seats. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on our way back to the backwards. station, we are going to make a courtesy stop at the Roundhouse. Uh, that stop is a courtesy to those passengers who do not want to go back to the station and parking lot area. You're not required to get off the train at the Roundhouse unless you want to. It's purely your decision. Uh, one item, there is no platform of the Roundhouse. We have to put out a step box because of the extended distance to the ground. The second and even more important now. When we come to a stop, our engineer may have to realign the train, which means we can still move for a short distance, even after we've stopped that first time. When we get permission to leave the train, you're going to use the same doorway and staircase that you use to board. Adults accompanying children, we ask you to please remain with your children and make sure they hold on to the handrails and do not push or jump down the stairs. For those of you who do not want to leave us in the roundhouse, they do want to go back to the parking lot area. All you need to do is just remain in your seats. We only stop at the roundhouse long enough to discharge passengers. We do not remain at that location. Now, on our way down here to the south end, I told you that I would later tell you about the roundhouse. Well, since some of you may be leaving us at that point, I'd like to begin telling you about the roundhouse now before we get there. Our current roundhouse has 37 repair bays and it was built in 1924. It was named after Bob Julian. He was the roundhouse foreman at the time, and it replaced another smaller roundhouse built back in 1896 on the very same site. The roundhouse is primarily used for light repair and inspections to locomotives. There were separate sections for freight and passenger engines, and during the late 1940s and early 1950s, Sections of the roundhouse were fitted with platforms and pits to facilitate the repair work on the diesels. For those of you who are first time visitors with us, the roundhouse courtesy stop is located immediately adjacent to our three main exhibit buildings. The roundhouse, which is dedicated to railroading, the flu shop, which is our antique automobile collection, and the back shop, which is the largest exhibit building on site. 
a quick word about the back shop, ladies and gentlemen. It is not a finished building. However, it is open for you to walk through. Currently, we're using it to store our latest acquisitions. We also use it for restoration work. In fact, we're rebuilding our Scott Airlines, DC-3 airliner in there right now. Now, getting back to those of you who are first-time visitors with us, when you go into the roundhouse, you can begin your tour by visiting some of the best of our rolling stock restoration projects. A good example of one of those restoration jobs is the 1925 Graham County Shea locomotive. When we first got the 1925 Shea, it was nothing more than scrap on wheels. Yeah, it was real junk. But our volunteers did such a good job getting that locomotive up and running that in 1999, we were invited to take it all the way out to Sacramento, California for the rail fair, the last great railroad show of the millennium. But when we got out there, we discovered that some of our West Coast railroaders did not have a very happy, very, a very high opinion of a bunch of North Carolina volunteers who only work on weekends and after hours to keep our equipment running. You see, they had organized a locomotive race, and thinking it would be an easy win for them, they challenged us. I don't have to tell you who won that race, do I? That's right, the 1925 Graham County Shea was the fastest Shea locomotive in America. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's uncharitable of being criticized as West Coast railroaders. They're actually very good people. They are dedicated to the preservation of railroad history like we are. It's just that morning they made one small miscalculation. They forgot we were from NASCAR country. And yes, we were accused of cheating, but they never proved it. I know, because I was here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going back onto museum property and we will be arriving at the Roundhouse Courtesy Stop momentarily. If you've not made up your mind as to whether you wish to leave or stay on board, I do have one statistic that may assist you in making that decision. It is exactly a one quarter of a mile walk between the Roundhouse and Barber Junction Depot in the parking lot area. And when we pull the station, uh, if you look to the right as you leave the train, you'll see a really large steam locomotive over to the side of the Roundhouse. That is the North and Western J-Class engine with number 611. It's one of the largest non-articulated steam locomotives in the country. It belongs to the Virginia Transportation Museum, and it's down here to have its uh, annual inspections and work. Uh, we are one of the very few locations in the country that is large enough to be able to handle those operations. Uh, we do have some bragging rights here. Our roundhouse is the largest operational roundhouse in the United States. There is a larger roundhouse in Nebraska, but it's a fairly building. It's not operational. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we're now arriving at the Roundhouse Courtesy Stop. I'll ask everyone that wishes to leave the train to please stay in your seats until I make an announcement that it's safe to leave the train. And again, there may be a significant delay between the time we stop and the time that it's safe to leave. We will work to assist you in leaving as quickly as we possibly can, but your safety is a primary concern for us. So we appreciate your patience. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to leave us at this point, it is your decision. You don't have to get off the train here if you do not wish to. And if you do wish to leave us, please remain in your seats until I make an announcement that it's safe to leave the train. Thank you.